What's up, everybody? Trinity here. Welcome back to the Second Street Marvel War. Today, I am talking about She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Episode 2, titled Super Human Law. And before I even get into my review of this episode and this show so far, I just want to say, you know, one of the things I really like is the fact that this show is just like 30 minutes tops. It's just like a short little, you know, and, and that's it. I'm sure there's some people out there that don't like that. They probably want longer episodes and stuff like that. But I got to tell you, for me, this absolutely works. Episode one seemed just to be about the length that it needed to be here along with episode two. You know, it kind of reminds me of those first couple of episodes of WandaVision in the sense that there was those couple of episodes that were short and sweet and to the point, not, you know, just enough in them, not too much. It's like nothing too much packed in kind of uh setting up the world a little bit and i really like that through these first couple of episodes that's just if you ask me let me know what you think down in the comments below and also while you're down there please make sure you're subscribed click the little bell and click the little all button you know in the little drop down menu to get all those notifications anytime i upload a new video or do a live stream Thank you so much for that. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Get, give it a thumbs down if you don't. It's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But let me know, um, you know, your thoughts down in the comments below. Why, you don't have to tell me why you gave me a thumbs down. Just tell me maybe why I might be wrong in my review of this show. It's okay. It's okay. I'm a big boy. I can take it. I swear. So, getting here into episode number two as i already said i like kind of these shorter episodes and this one kind of left me in that sense where like you know what i'm waiting for episode number three i, I am i'm legit like i can't wait to see it um just considering what we get out of this episode which i think was a more well balanced episode than the last one was and i'll tell you you know one of the things coming out of uh episode episode one after everybody sees is all the feminism and stuff in it like like look to me i mean i see some of that in there i mean was some of it heavy-handed i i don't know i mean I, I will leave that up to you i think people are making a bigger deal about it than it was because to me it just felt like i don't know it felt a little cheesy it felt a little cheesy it didn't feel like it was like beating you over the head i mean it felt like one of these probably shows like i never watched ally mcbeal which is actually in this episode but i figure it's probably somewhat like that and i mean it's more female centric and hey it's whatever i like to me it seemed a little bit more cheesy and then like in this episode however i like one of the things that they did was from the very get-go they actually kind of showed you uh the man's world that she's living in from the very start where they're uh talking to uh you know the reporters and everything about what happened in the courtroom incident where uh titania goes and it was it was her low blood sugar it was her low blood sugar <laughs> Uh, and they're talking about that, but then there was the guy that was there inside the court, and he was saying about, oh, this this chick, you know, and he's like, uh, you know, he's like this chick, and she, you know, basically like, uh, how I can't even remember how how it was he put it, like basically saying she looked good, right? And you know, just, just kind of that to then where you get to the very next scene when they're going into the bar and she's trying to have to uh, fit into this world this uh, that she don't really want to, right? And then you get in there, they're in the bar, you know, more of a... Uh, this this kind of setting where everybody's just kind of relaxed drinking having a good time or her uh one of her uh co-workers comes up to her the guy yeah the, the, the chauvinist guy and he's there talking to her about how she got her powers and nepotism like and you can kind of see how he's being tortured uh, and everything as well and then you know the kind of remark he makes like oh uh, who's that hot chick over there i'm gonna go talk to it and just just kind of they're doing all these little things in there and then how even like the boss comes up and like he seems like he's even just kind of nervous to talk to her all together and just all of the little things that, that are just kind of done here uh throughout where you know it's kind of that world that she was describing in the first episode where you know all the dudes and kind of the stereotypes if you will and they kind of really played them up but very subtly here in this episode even when you get to the fact that she gets offered this job and you know there she's there and they want her to be she hulk when she finally gets approached there um after being basically shut out of any you know after she gets fired from her boss uh she goes out on a bunch of interviews and gets shut basically shut out for you know doing what she didn't want to do which was kind of uh, go out there be the hulk and do this whole thing like um, so you kind of see a lot of a lot of those you know what it, and you know what it is it's because all the men are 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 scared of a strong whammon right that's 
<laughs> That's what it is. I swear. I'm kidding. Come on, guys. So she's out there looking for the job. She gets the job and they ask her to be She-Hulk while she's there, while she's in court. And again, this is once again, this isn't even like the male, uh, like a male thing. This is just like, um, hey, uh, we're basically hiring you for this. And you know what? I think there's a lot. I think there's layers to that. If you really think about that, they just hired her for that. I mean, what are we talking about here? Hiring somebody for diversity and inclusion, maybe? So anyway, you see her sitting there kind of going through with the boss and everything. And he's sitting there flapping her gums and he asks her, uh, what do you think about that? And she gives the answer, you know, I'm agnostic. And, you know, he's like, hmm, well, that's uh, kind of, you know, like his reaction to it was very, uh, was very kind of funny and kind of telling. Especially considering he even said uh, earlier when he made the job offer that he don't joke. So, uh, I mean, there's that. And then just kind of all, just like I said, trying to be, you know, like fit into uh, this world. Then you see, you know, like uh, she comes in, gets a welcoming present from a guy named Pug with the best places to poop. Like a guy named Pug, like a dog? Places, great place to poop? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, regardless, uh, she ends up getting her first, um, her, her, first uh, her first job as well. Her first case, uh, is, which is Emil Blonsky, and then you kind of see a lot of, uh, like, uh, like I said, just kind of this going through her going through this world. You know, she goes, she goes to have dinner with her family too. I, I almost forgot that the dinner with her family, and you can see once again more of the stuff from. Uh, I don't even know what you call it, like the male gaze, you know, or just basically from her point of view, like the you know trying, you know, as a woman trying to fit into um, this world, this status quo that women are supposed to fit into, uh, be it by men or even by women, because you can see here at the dinner table, which I thought was funny. Uh, was it, her, it must have been her cousin Chad, you know? <laughs> He's like, oh, I thought you said mention it. Like, oh, like, like, I don't know. Like, he cracked me up. I thought he was kind of funny. Plus, his name Chad. I thought that was just like, anyway, it was, it was kind of funny. But then you see as they're sitting there having dinner, like, and that's the thing is like, this just kind of like nobody really wants to hear about her problems or anything. Everybody just wants to help her. And you see like her, it must be her uncle and his wife. It seemed like his wife, not her aunt uh, that were there at the at the table as well talking about oh uh how you know like oh hey you got uh, about chad getting his at uh, best buy getting promoted like oh you got got a job and promoted and but then his wife is sitting there and is like oh you know like we need to fix that hair you need to get it looking good just like all of those just kind of little things like so it kind of goes back to some of the stuff in episode one where she's talking about how always trying to constantly fit in and blah 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 you know like and again i that that's why I, even with the stuff that happened in episode one that again got people upset like i think the thing is is that everybody a lot of times i, I think at, uh at some point in a lot of people's lives kind of feel like they have to uh fit into the status quo of what uh the world Im expects them to and that's really kind of what i felt out of this but her actually going through and living in that world where she's expected to be this uh, certain uh, kind of person or whatnot like that. So I don't know. That's just if you ask me. That's just if you ask me. Because then we get there with uh, the thing with Emil Blonsky when she goes in there and she finally talks to him. And really, I mean, doesn't it seem like he's probably... Is he manipulating? It, feels, it, feels, it seems like a little like he's manipulating people here. You know, playing the game, if you will. Um, but... You get in here, you know, the conflict of interest with her cousin, but then he gets in here and he explains again. It felt like, again, I feel like this is that Cobra Kai thing, once again, where, you know, like, and it's just funny because this was in, like, the Dragon Ball Super uh, Superhero as well, where you have, remember that, that YouTube video where they did the Cobra Kai, or they did uh, Daniel LaRusso was the delinquent in that caused all the problems in Karate Kid, and you know they go and they set up why he's the why he's the problem, and then in Cobra Kai they went through and in the episode that one episode they did it in season one, I think it was season one, wasn't it? Where they actually did that whole uh, basically YouTube video like in in an episode, and like I thought I thought like they they kind of did that a little bit that's kind of i don't know that's just if you ask me um just kind of uh showing it from uh my point of view from a certain point of view but really this whole thing um what blonsky is talking about is kind of the exact same thing from falcon and winter soldier with john walker where you know like if you're feeling sorry for blonsky you got to feel bad for john walker if you ask me because it was the same thing where blonsky was just doing what he was trained to do what he was asked to do he even says i thought i was the good guy right and by all accounts he was 
but then he became not because of the serum, right? Like what it did. Like there's like all of those uh, kind of uh, things playing in here, which uh, like I will say one thing about is because like taking and making villains uh, like sympathetic people. And I will say that even going back to the Hulk, I mean, how much how much of a villain really was he? Because he really was doing what the you know what he was asked to do and you know he kind of took over and got a little you know like uh basically all got roided out got all roid raged out so uh like the case he's building there but i think that's a, a bit different from where we see other instances of people who are bad guys who are just all of a sudden good guys like gore the god butcher who kidnapped a bunch of children and then all of a sudden at the end of the movie it's okay because Love wins, and his daughter's gonna be just his daughter's gonna be just fine. That's uh, way different. Or even like Yondu, who was a child trafficker, who got redeemed for saving one of the people that he trafficked years later. I don't know. That's just, that's just if you ask me. But you see here, like Blonsky, like and he has a pretty good case, and definitely worth arguing. But also, I mean, just everything through that kind of makes you think also, you know, like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the Thunderbolts, right? Aren't we talking about the Thunderbolts? Like, we know that General Ross isn't there anymore, which by all means in the in the MCU, they're probably going to make the Thunderbolts named after General Ross, who had nothing to do with the original team of the Thunderbolts. It was Baron Zemo. And, anyway. Okay, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> the, but the, the point being is, uh, you see that, that whole line there was like, well, hey, I was just doing what I was told. Like, I was... Uh, you know working for the government i did you know just like just like just like john walker's the same kind of thing although in john walker's case uh they didn't give him the super soldier serum he took that himself so there's there's a little bit of a difference there but uh really he was still doing the same thing um essentially being asked what he was uh charged with his duty um working for the united states government just doing what he was asked to do so i mean there is that uh, so, I mean, like, you, you kind of get it. I think it's a little bit different from, uh, some of the other things that they've done with some of the villains, uh, in the MCU. But, regar regardless of all that, you can kind of see build builds the case. And then this really kind of brings in something by the end of the episode. Uh, by the time we get to the end of the episode, uh, as well. Uh, regarding, regarding Blonsky and some of the timeline from Shang-Chi to, uh, to here, to what we see when, uh, Jen is talking to Bruce about going to defend Blonsky is, you know, he, we see him on that Sicarian ship. Like, uh, okay. Obviously he's had Sicarian, they had the ship. He was going there uh, to pay his child support and he's going to be back. But then that leaves in question when Shang-Chi happened, right? When did Shang-Chi happen compared to this? You seen in Shang-Chi, he still had that inhibitor on his arm. Maybe he made a new one, but that would lead me to believe that that scene actually happened before you would think that happened before um, this series, you know, uh, came out. Or, you know, like, before at least they crashed anyway, which was when she got her powers. But then um, the Shang-Chi happened, but then we, like, there's, like, so, but in Shang-Chi, we also seen the Blonsky scene, right? So, and but also in the episode, they didn't tell us when the whole Blonsky thing happened either. They just said it surfaced online. They didn't say when. It surfaced online but then that brings us to the timing of this as well because uh earlier in the episode when she's sitting there looking for a job she's looking on her little computer and she sees there's there's some articles on there which call into question a bunch of things for one the one thing i want to mention is uh there's this big old article that's on there about uh this dream job you know 10 10 ways to you know get a new, like get a new job if you don't like what you're doing now or whatever you know you know what it is uh but it's about being a mascot in a small Swiss town that they even provide house, uh, housing um, in the town square. And I just thought it was really weird um, that it's, you know, it's in, it's in Switzerland. Uh, Hail the great Dr. Arnim Zola. He's Swiss. Uh, anyway, uh, there's that. But then also looking at Moon Knight and the little picture they showed there looks very reminiscent of uh, the town that we seen uh, Mark Spector in in Moon Knight, or I guess it was was it was it, it was it Mark Spector or was it yeah I I don't know you get what I'm saying though right uh, so 
it looks it looked very much uh like that same town and then the mask like the mascot it just had some pictures of a couple of bears i'm not sure if that had anything to do with the actual town or if they just put like somebody in a mascot costume um but very i don't know suspicious but then there's also the little articles on the side one of them uh talking about uh some scientists and something they discovered uh but then the other one talking about uh some guy in a barroom brawl with claws metal claws right and this very much sounds like wolverine <laughs> Right? This very much sounds like Wolverine. But the other one, uh, the other little article underneath that was about the mysterious person um, in the middle of the ocean, which would have been obviously a callback to the Eternals, which is all some very strange stuff because I feel like there's some very big connections being uh, made here obviously i mean we're talking about uh we're talking about hope going back to sakar we're talking about wolverine here we're talking about a reference to the eternals here as well and if you've watched me and watched any of my videos you've heard me talk about this thing called uh the emerald tablet which is very interesting it's this this thing out there i mean you can look it up yourself or you can go watch my video about it the emerald tablet which kind of leads to this thing called the philosopher's stone and how the emerald tablet and even the philosopher's stone kind of give way if you ask me to everything we've seen go down in the mcu um regarding uh science magic medicine healing um even things like turning base metals into gold or silver and it really made me start to think about wolverine and uh who they would bring in um you know basically teasing the origins of wolverine and that was clear back in the eternals and i've talked about that in a video here on the channel about the emerald tablet definitely some interesting stuff going on here because now we have these teases here of uh basically wolverine i mean who else like the metal claws is it, come on come on but then also thinking about the eternals as well with uh you know the, like the big alien coming out of the middle of the ocean so uh definitely some interesting things going on in this episode uh here uh it feels like there's a lot being set up and then we kind of get to the end of the episode and it's just like really quick and that was it like it, it, it kind of ep uh, ends really quick um with, with you know just the episode where you find out the blonsky uh broke out of prison and he was there in the little uh you know the little underground fighting thing uh there in that we've seen in shang chi so uh you know and obviously we know we're gonna get wong later in the series as well it could be the next episode and so i mean maybe that's obviously why we're gonna get wong in the uh in the next episode because he's gonna be sitting there like oh like i didn't I, I wasn't trying to break him out of prison i was just uh uh, uh you know like nobody was gonna know right <laughs> that's probably what's gonna be his cameo here in this movie is kind of defending um jennifer walter's new client right but I don't know. That's just if you ask me. Uh, altogether, I like the way this episode was, the pacing of it, the shortness of it. It was short, sweet, to the point, gave us enough. This episode actually made me ready to watch episode number three. Like I actually feel, I actually feel pretty good about this. And I will say again too about like you know some of the stuff like the complaints from the first episode with like some of the feminism and stuff, and then you get here into this episode, uh, you really see more of that kind of stuff in here. But like you see it, you don't hear about it. And I will say uh, that I mean just going along uh, with all of that, it seems like something I've noticed in the comic books is when people like when these writers and stuff put that kind of stuff you know like stuff that people feels like hits them over the head uh when they do that it seems like they usually only do it in like the first issue of a comic or in this case the first issue uh the first episode of the show but i don't know that's just if you ask me but let me know what you think down in the comments below about she hulk episode number two did you like it if not why not if so why so and are you ready for uh, episode number three coming out next week? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. But that's all I've got for this video today, folks. Thank you all so much for being here on the Second Street Marvel. Again, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you do that, click the little bell. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't. Make sure that for sure you share it out with your friends and invite them to come and hang out with us here. On the Second Street Marvel, you all have a good day and we'll see you in the next video. Later.